Today, I'm telling you about some of the most interesting Geometry Dash players to ever rise up and make even the best fear their presence. These players are unique because they never actually existed, they were just illusions. So to introduce how this is even possible in the first place, first I'll tell you about a small scale secret operation. In Geometry Dash, everyone has their reasons for creating, pushing the limits to see what's possible, conveying their ideas through deep and thought provoking designs, and slightly increasing this number. This is the amount of creative points a player has and getting even one is considered to be the hardest achievement in the game. You can only get them if Robtop approves of your level and gives it a star value along with the quality rating. Robtop's a busy man, so most levels first have to go through the Geometry Dash moderation team. This is Mikasta GD, who's quite obviously hacking a level. Mikasta's replays consisted of obvious noclip and some very incoherent descriptions. Here's some examples. As usual, people would expose Mikasta for hacking but soon they'd realize they were dealing with a completely different entity. All of a sudden, Mikasta would mention half of the GD mods on Twitter with the request to send his level to Robtop. This was his creation. How? I, I thought this guy was dumb. I, I could never make this. This level was definitely ray worthy, but one issue, no one could find the level. Everyone knew the name was ELO too, but searching it up would bring no results. Next people would ask for ID, and it was always the same. The ID is... Dot, dot, dot. Although this level would split people's opinions on Mikasta. What was once an incoherent hacker was now suddenly an amazing creator that also doesn't know how to upload a level? Something's not adding up. Some well-known creators would be accused of running some sort of alter ego account. But the weird building style of the level made any claims hard to substantiate. However, there would be an opening. In this Twitter video, there were certain context clues, like these soda cans and this storefront, which allowed the investigator Paco to deduce that Mikasta GD was from Singapore. This would lead people to immediately suspect Durian Head, as he was the most well-known Singaporean creator who was still active. The correlation between the two creating styles was clear. After this, Mikasta would claim to quit Geometry Dash with another incoherent word document. Soon later, the YouTuber Redlocks would interview Durian Head, and they finally revealed the truth. Redlocks was the player who noclip most of the levels, and Durian Head was the creator of ELO 2, a level that would eventually be uploaded onto his account, and of course, featured. Little did the Geometry Dash community know that an operation far bigger than Mikasta was about to fool everyone. An unknown player suddenly started frequently releasing levels that were named according to the digits of Pi. This player was Gerald Brown and his first level was of course named 314. This was followed by 159 but no one would really notice until the third level, 265, got raided. The styles of these levels would heavily differ, as if that wasn't enough he was releasing a level once every two days. Most of his levels would get featured and the level 937 would get an epic rating. This is the biggest honor for any creator, especially one so new. Could this much consistency and dedication really be the work of one person? During this time, even extremely consistent creators like Yunhasu14 only released one level a week. This would shake up many members of the creator leaderboard, which was topped by Viprin, a veteran creator with over 270 creator points. Viprin had been creating for years. There was entire updates where he was the undisputed fastest creator. Doing the math, Gerald Brown was gaining approximately 26 creator points a month. If Gerald Brown stayed this consistent over the period of a year, he would easily overthrow the number one creator Viperin. This achievement would be especially impressive because only four people have ever had the number one spot on the creator leaderboard. There were theories here and there about Gerald Brown being a fake player, but the truth would be revealed far sooner than everyone expected. Some users were chatting in Viperin's Discord server when suddenly the topic of Gerald Brown was brought brought up. Viprin would suddenly hint at the unthinkable. A few days after this message, Gerald Brown would reveal on Twitter that he was actually many different creators, each responsible for levels of their own. There were over a dozen other people involved in the project in some other way, whether they were a spectator or a creator. Today, the Gerald Brown account is mostly inactive, with the occasional joke post that tells a story from the POV of a 14-year-old Brazilian Geometry Dash player. One of these stories would be him escaping Brazil, where he then found himself on an abandoned island after struggling to find food and shelter. He eventually hoped his family would find him, and they did. What a wholesome story. However, this still isn't the craziest case of a secret group behind a Geometry Dash player. To find the greatest Geometry Dash player who never existed, we have to go back in time to the first ever fake player. No one was more known in the community than the top player Riot. He was able to complete several of the game's hardest levels. 
Maps so difficult they were known as extreme demons. There was no greater honor than owning the hardest rated level in the game. Riot owned the number one level bloodbath, but some players like Servant Trusto were starting to catch up to his skill, putting his top player status in question. He looked to claim his undisputed number one spot by beating Sonic Wave. He was competing with a player called Mephoe, someone who was only known as a Sonic Wave specialist because all of his other achievements paled in comparison. The race to beat Sonic Wave was underway, but it was about to get a mysterious third wheel who no one knew about. This guy who got 81% on Sonic Wave was named Quirr, someone who had been active in Geometry Dash for less than a month. Normally, you'd expect an up-and-coming player's first video to be something easy like me being Stereo Manus. Impressive, right? Well, Quirr's first videos were Extreme Demons. Of course, people were initially suspicious, but Quirr streamed on Twitch and there was no evidence of him hacking. He beat every level with insanely low world record attempt counts. He was second to beat Betrayal of Fate, only behind the controversial player Mailman. Someone who just like Quirr had an extremely fast rise, but not nearly enough evidence to back up his achievements. Quirr was on a journey to take over Geometry Dash. Everyone's eyes were set on the race to beat Sonic Wave. The top players had a hard time piecing this together. How could they find no evidence on the most suspicious player in Geometry Dash history? Well, lucky for Serve, he was about to receive a message from Mailman that would explain everything. Quar wasn't one person. Quar was a collective of players, each of which were all specifically designated to beat certain extreme demons. Mailman beat Betrayal of Fate once for his account and a second time for Quar's. Wabusher beat Bloodbath and several other top players would help slay the top demons. Gygus was responsible for talking like Quar. He successfully created a persona of Quar being a mysterious Korean player with broken English, inspired after legendary players of Geometry Dash's past. However, there was a major flaw. Mephoe was was the player who got 98% on Sonic Wave. He also got a 90% run on the core account and was involved with the project from its inception. Mephoe would suddenly decide to invite the infamous player Aurorus. Other team members advised against it, but it was too late everything would come crashing down. You see, Quora had been compromised. Aurorus was an incredibly suspicious and controversial player. Upon joining Quora, all he would do was blackmail and threaten the members, leading to them just deciding to quit the project altogether. Quora would be completely publicized in August of 2016 on a GD Forms post by the group's leader, Nicrodox. While the occasional theory pops up of there being a fake top player, it really hasn't been proven and even though Quar's potential was never fully reached, I'm not sure if there will ever be another quote unquote player like him again. Maybe because the demon list team will ban you nowadays if you're part of a group account. So why were these three accounts made in the first place? You could argue it's just to do a little trolling, but the amount of effort that it takes to build these fake personas is quite insane to think about. I guess this was their way of showing passion for their seemingly simple favorite mobile game. In a game like Geometry Dash, it is inevitable that someday you will create your last level. Someday you will beat a demon more difficult than anything you've achieved before and then never do it again. So I guess with the limited time that we all have with Geometry Dash, we might as well make the most of it, right? 